to the first keynote talk. Uh, I'm very happy that uh, my colleague from Germany, um, Peter Leinen, agreed on giving this keynote. Um, I um, have the honor to announce his talk. He works in the National Library of Germany in Frankfurt. So the National Library has two places, but he's in Frankfurt and he heads the IT department. And um, he is uh, involved in several projects, amongst them also the Text Plus National Research Data Infrastructure Project that is one of, one of the pillars of this project was the German Clarion but the national libraries is another pillow. National libraries or libraries and infrastructures are part of the first day and uh, we will see him later as well. Uh, Peter studied computer science and mainly mathematics uh, early in the, uh, already in the 80s. Uh, his PhD in mathematics was uh, done in, the in 1990. And uh, amongst other things, he worked in uh, as the head of the um, research um, uh, IT department at the University of Trier in the University of Mannheim. And then he took over the head of the uh, IT group in Frankfurt at the National Library. His research interests have been for a long time high performance computing, but today uh, his most recent um, articles are on derived text formats that makes it possible to deal with text data even if they are copyrighted. So I'm very, very happy that Peter has agreed on giving this keynote and I welcome him here. Thanks a lot for the kind introduction. And the first homework you have to do is why is how is the way from HPC to the German National Library? So I will leave you alone with this question. I'm, glad, I'm very, very happy to be here and also to start some networking in this community. Um, the topic of the talk is enabling digital research. And the talk will show some activity we have in the German National Libraries in the last, in the last year and also in the context of setting up in, in Germany, this research data infrastructure uh, starting three years ago. In the required briefness, we will touch on the topic on our collection, have a look at some specific project we have in the context of digital humanities, and then finally have some details on this research data infrastructure we are involved in, again, also with Maharis Martin. <clears throat> So the National Library is founded in 1912 and the following detail might be interesting by the German Publishers and Booksellers Association and not as a, a public um, institution. Um, founded also by the city of Leipzig. There's an automatism behind. No, come back. Um, and by the Kingdom of Saxonia. So this might be 100 years ago, but it is only mostly 100 years uh, left since our foundation. In the context of the division of Germany, we get another founding, in, in, in this time in Frankfurt, again by the book publishers and the bookseller association in the Western part. Since 1990, we will be one organization with two locations, and since 2006, we are also named the National Library of Germany. And you see at that point, the National Library as an organization is, that's what I belong to, but the National Library as a function is much broader in Germany. We have these big uh, local libraries, uh, local state libraries. We have some special collections like the German Music Archive, the German Exile Archive 33 to 45, and also the German Book and Type Museum with us. So we have a broad collection beside our legal mandate. The mission is to collect, to document, and to archive all work written and in written and sound. That's the media type we are concerned with. Works are books, periodicals, CDs, records, maps. Why does it go automatically? Um, online publications and websites starting in 2006. The basic is the law on the German National Library as usual, or mostly usable, and there are some regulations on what you have to deliver. 
this is also very valid for Andreas. We, we expect two, two books of that uh, in the near future. <clears throat> Um, the acting area in our strategy might be also very interesting. We focus mainly on the digital part, but not never, never. Uh, but also the physical part is very, very important for us. Expanding the digital collection, expanding digital index procedures, and that's the first topic we might be have in common because automatic index procedure, procedures are something have some similarity to text and data mining used in, in the research community. Presentation of the collections digit digitally. This will be also a valid point for, for the talk, for the rest of the talk. Connecting culture and science is one of the main issue we have also written in our strategy. And the last point, developing the, the learning organization is might be a talk for themselves, not going into detail, but let me say all the topics around new work and the change in our in our uh, work working um, is also located there. Expanding digital collection, what we expect there, the digital collection has been have been expanded, especially in the areas of music, individual digital publications such as e-books and e-journals. Uh, we will say later some some figures on that, and on other digitized works. On the long run, the aim is to have all the physical objects, all the physical media, all also in the digital form. But you will see the figures later. You might expect this is not ready tomorrow or in two years. Connecting culture and science is the last point, I guess I will strain, strain, uh, bring you to the last point. We increase the visibility of our institution as a strong node in networks. This might be networking in cultural science and in, in CLEM, galleries, libraries, archives, and museums, but also in the science part. Some milestones, and let me make a remark. When you ever see this picture on the slide, it's time to review what I have said, to make a short, a short stop and to change a little bit the direction of the talk. But what's, what's important to, to the collection we, we have? This is the expansion of the collection mandate long time ago, 2006. We have the copyright law reform in Germany. It's very important for this German National Library and also the implementation of the directive on copyright in, in, the, in the digital single market. It's a complicated word uh, or short, the DSM directive international law. And we have some, some milestones mainly focused on, on the German uh, landscape. There is a um, German Council for Scientific Information Infrastructures, which came up with a, with a paper performance through diversity. And this is a, a, a very interesting paper. And le this leads to the decision of the joint science conference to establish this national research data infrastructure uh, starting in 2019, 20, something around that. So some numbers, some figures and allow the mathematician to do so. Um, we get more than 2 million media works per year. Most or half of them, more than half of them already in digital form. The holdings are around 45 million media works and coming, coming back, what I said, um, digitization of this, of this media work is not just finished yes, uh, tomorrow or in two years. And the, the, from this 45 million media works, there are already 12 million digital objects now available in our collection. What can you imagine hun, there behind this digital collection? We have a huge, huge collection of eBooks and we have a huge collection of e-journals and we are very proud on our e-paper collection, which nowadays is the complete collection of all newspapers on a daily basis in Germany. This is also a very fast growing collection. This, is all, this are already impressive number, at least I find these numbers very impressive, but that's not the end of the story, it's just the beginning. 
what have you to do in the next in the next years? There's a backlist on the of the academic publishers holding more than another six million digital objects for us. Remember, we started 2006 and we end up in 2022 with 12 million. You see another six million. There are a lot of open access publications waiting to collect 10, about, about 10 million. We have some complete new topics around digital music, streaming is the, is the topic on that. We have a huge legal issue on, on that. Um, and we have some technical issues also in that. We have to set up the web archive of the German internet. You might ask, what is the German internet? And what belongs to them and what belongs not to them? Only one figure on that. We have 60 million DE domains around. So no way to get it completely. So we are just sitting, uh, setting up a project with, with the researchers to attack the specific need of the researchers um, in the selection strategy and to build up the web archive. And as, as, as I told you already, we are just starting the digitization of the physical collections in a systematically way. That means year by year on a topic related. So the next year might be 2033. Looking at the German history, you might, you might clear what this date is. And we have some project related digitization coming back in a minute to that. So that's the challenges. That's the work we have to do. Go ahead. And you see this picture. So we are now coming to the copyright law in 2018 and the implementation of the DSM directive into the national law. Hopefully you know all this text, but in a nutshell, since 2018, our users at the National Library are for the first time allowed to do text and data mining on our digital objects for the first time. Even we as a National Library are allowed to do so in an, off in an official way. <clears throat> this is a big change and a big challenge, but it's also a chance you have to tackle this. Just after I moved to the German National Library, as in 2016, I get a lot of a lot of requests to start some some projects on based on the collection of the German National Library. At that moment, I have to say no. But as we see, new copyright law in Germany, we started one project, one pilot project on a very specific collection, sub-collection we have on the dime novels. Anybody knows what the dime novels is? Anybody read this type of? Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> so we have a huge collection already born digital because the publisher has digitized all this old stuff by themselves. And doing so, they have to deliver all the, the digital object to the National Library. The objective for the researcher was to check, to evaluate and develop method of distance reading. And I show you later the, the, the figures, the number behind that. Our aims at the German National Library was to get into this field. This was a very first start. What is this, the potential for us? What are the tasks we have to do as a library on a daily basis, what we see in this, in this project. So where's the strong connection between those projects and to gather some, some experience on that. I feel nobody strikes the hand because this is literature for the lower classes, at least in theory. Uh, some very specific, specific, excuse me, very specific characteristics behind this novel. The first one is the 64 pages. Each and every novel has 64 pages. Doesn't it? it no, there's no exception. The market is some special. There are some very strong guidelines by the publishers. And this has a very strong influence to the text and data mining algorithm we have seen in the project. 
And there are some serialized novels you might imagine. The collection at the end now is about 40,000 dime novels in digital form. And we have some, some high literature, so-called high literature for comparison. The research question came around is genre detection. And you might expect that genre like crime stories or love stories might be far away if you look at the gender. Don't expect too much. It's very hard sometimes to detect this genre in an automatic way. Complexity of language. As I told you, this is a literature, so-called literature for the lower, uh, for some, there are some, some theory that the complexity of the language has to be very simple. Yes, at the end, it is so, but not in the science fiction genre. Characters, gender, action patterns, and so on and so far. There are a lot of research questions coming around. And the picture shown here is the, the genre distribution we have uh, in, in, one, in one of, of the sub-project of this. Lessons learned. Be aware, also these dime novels are not free for use um, and has to be processed in the German National Library. I forgot to mention the law on the German National Library told us every use of our collection has to be on premise. Okay, so this is a big disadvantage, but nevertheless, we have a lot of pro uh, uh, projects projects around nowadays. Building up a specific infrastructure, no connection to the internet. You might imagine it's not very funny to install some software on, an, on a server with no internet connection. Dealing with growing corpus is one of the, of the issues we have learned. And I'm always complaining about this PDF. This P must be painful. There's a first letter on, on that. Uh, the native formats we get from the publishers are not suitable for text and data mining. And even we remarked, we get some hints on a gap in our collection. One of the publisher has not delivered. So the researchers told us there should be some ebooks from these publishers. It took us three days. We had it on in our collection. Lessons learned, building up this specific infrastructure that's on the way. Dealing with growing corpus, we have some ideas on that. Native format, not complaining again. Gap in the, in the, in the collection. Um, it being a, a first pilot project um, in the very, very early day, we get a very visibility. And it is listed as an example of data intensive research in the humanity in this report, um, Wissenschaftsrat? Yes, yes, the Scientific Council, yes. Okay, thank you. So at that point, I could say successful start. What are the next step? The next step should be in a more um, structured way. We set up a DH, so-called DH call, digital humanities call, support of project from research, but also from cultural in institution. And because it has to be on our infrastructure, and because there's a lot of support we have to do for those projects, we allow up to two new projects concerning on digital objects. There are a lot of other projects around uh, focus on, on the metadata we have. One of the, these projects is flying around, it's called On Love and Dead in the National Library. It's, an, it's, a, it's a famous project. Uh, I remember a meeting of the DH community in, in Cologne where, where the first uh, Frank Fischer told us on, on this project. It was very amazing to see what, what, how rich our metadata already are. The service is the, the service I told you already, provisioning of metadata, digital objects and the, the infrastructure and also for an, an, as an, with an, with an office behind. Digitization nowadays also on a limited scale. That means you, you might have some digitized, uh, digitization with to, within your project and the infrastructure. Nowadays, we have a lot of, of projects 
on a broad range of, of interest. The dime novels, yes, I told you already, otherness in, cook and, in cookery books. It was, a very, it was a very exciting project, but our collection of cookery books, if you have a closer, closer look on that, you have children cooking books, you have diet cooking books, you can imagine every kind of cookery books. This brings one topic, the question of how structured is our collection? So we have a huge collection, but the use of this huge, huge collection is, is painful at the end. So how can we structure those collections into sub-collections in data, in data feasible for a specific research question? This is one of the, the big topic, I guess we have also in, in Text Plus. We have the fuel market in Leipzig between the two world wars. We have the secret bestsellers, uh, German dime novel on a, on a larger scale. Uh, construction of a diversity corpus as a basis for algorithms for text analysis, um, fixing on the not on, on female or male roles in in uh, um, in text, but also on this role diverse. We have a very exciting project idea, uh, foresight extraction from science fiction literature, and we have also a huge project nowadays on on the metadata from around data around, we collect uh, data from around 20 national libraries around the globe to get some, some information on children and use literature worldwide. Some other DH activities is the so-called DNB lab. It focuses on all data free accessible. This is the metadata, the, the catalog data, but it's also our authority files, which is very interesting also for researchers digital objects which are free, and all table of contents. All, all, we, we digitized all books, uh, we digitized all tables of contents of all books uh, we get aware of. Interface to this data, this is the, the, the most, the most um, the drive into how can you get this data in a very convenient way, some tutorials, some Python scripts, some or at least some fragment of Python scripts, and some webinars to do that. And this is a very successful, is a success story. Every every webinar, every meeting we we uh, announce is fully booked. So this is also very exciting. And the newest one is the DH Fellow. We have now starting in 2022 three fellows for three, six, or five months. Um, with a focus on catalog data this time, because if you focus on copyright protected uh, objects, we have to build up another infrastructure. And as building up the infrastructure is not, is only, it's more or less on my desk, the colleague decided to make it on catalog data. I'm very glad for the decision. Again, lessons learned from this DH project or the DH activities. We have very different individual requirements for each project, depend on the research question, depend on the corpus. Um, there's a strong and stronger um, need for structured full text. This is one topic we have to do in the next year. And this brings me to national research data infrastructure. This brings me to text plus. Scalable infrastructure is, is even not a, a question of money. Um, being a national library, um, management of growing corpora, this has to, to be to deal with. And we have to be aware the German National Library, the DNB is a preparation of that. The German National Library is part of the research process. It's not only giving away the data, it's part of the research process. process. Now what's the next step? structured approach beyond this DH activities we have done, become part of a text-based community, develop forms of legally compliant access. This is what Andreas mentioned. Uh, what can we do? Derive text formats. Um, which one? How many? The, the key question on that. Pro provide service and know-how we have but also get the know-how from the research community back. Okay, and build up some basic algorithms used in the DH community. The community named entity recognition is one of them also connected to our authority file. 
So there's a, a giving and there's a, a back uh, information or know-how transport, trans, transport back, at least the hope. Again, you'll see this picture. So the focus on the DH aspects we have done in the, in the past or actually are doing um, is, is closed. And now we are focused on this national research data infrastructure, at least a little bit. The goal is development and long-term preservation of data holdings. And I should add, also build up some service infrastructures along the FAIR principles without any boundaries. And the goal is up to, to build up up to 30 consortia all over the scientific disciplines. And the assembly, this is a very interesting um, thing behind. This should be in a science-driven process. There's nobody's, nobody telling us this one, this one, this one, but it should be come from, from a bottom-up process. And a cross-linked structure means there has to be some interlinkings between those consortia. And I will just mention two of them. There is a MOU, Memory of Understanding, by consortia from the humanities and cultural studies. This is a very important uh, also for the Text Plus community and also for the German National Library. There's the Leipzig Berlin statement on crust cutting issues in infrastructure development. Also very interesting, also very important for, for Text Plus and also for the German National Library. And we have the networking in the NFDE association which is a little bit different than the consortia. Um, and nowadays the topics are metadata, provenance, common infrastructure, training and education, ethical and legal aspects. The last one you might expect immediately when I look at the table of the working group um, also here. Where we are, we have nine consortia started in 2020 including NFDE for Culture. I will come back to this uh, consortium right in a minute. Um, Text Plus um, with nine other consortia started in 2021. And there are some other consortia waiting for the starting point, including two uh, consortia from the humanities, namely NFDE for Memory and NFDE for Objects. And there's one additional, some specific um, consortia um, waiting for improvement. Uh, it's called base NFDI. This is a, the base uh, behind. You need some, uh, some, some basic um, infrastructure to build up all this research infrastructure on top of it. Oh, here's the, the overview. Again, NFDE for memory and NFDE for objects is still waiting for the improvement. Text Plus focus on data infrastructure, focused on language and text data. NFTE for culture is more on material and immaterial cultural heritage, where NFTE for memory focus on the, on the research questions, data requiring historic, historical contextualization. And NFTE for objects is more the material remains of humanity history, of human history, sorry. So the, there might be some overlaps in, you might expect some overlaps in, in it. Yes, you will see it. So the consortia from the humanities has this memory of understanding. On the one hand, you see the specialization of this consortia. On the other hand, at the moment, the common issues appears, metadata, authority data, terminal, terminologies, provenance, rights and ethical aspects, data literacy. And you might expect immediately where the German National Library go, is, goes into. Metadata, authority files, linked open data, terminologies, uh, and even rights and, and ethical aspects are uh, the common issues the German National Library is involved. <clears throat> Text Plus has three data domains, collection, lexical resources, and editions. 
And within the collections, we have the contemporary language cluster, we have the historical cluster, and we have the unstructured text cluster. And we have a, also a cross-cutting um, infrastructure and operation uh, domain with us. The community, I will not read all of them, but the community is a very broad into the um, humanities and social sciences. And it's not only on linguistic, it's not only on um, literature studies. There are a lot of, of them. Um, or we, we, we offer the services uh, to a lot of them. Coming to an end, what is the role of a library? So we have a discussion on Clarin and libraries. We have a discussion on library as data, collection as data. We'll see it immediately after my talk. The German National Library is one of the co applicant and this means in Text Plus also the task area lead in this specific case for the data domain collection. And also the cluster unstructured text within that data domain. I told you already our objects are unstructured. PDF is no structure behind it. And I told you already we have a huge collection, but there's almost no structure behind it. So that's the reason why we call it the unstructured cluster. Um, and we have to, to, to give it more structure on, on each and every level. Topics for the National Library is a digital collection as far as we are allowed, or we have this derived, derived text format. It's for sure on standards and metadata. It's authority files, this authority file from the German National Library, widely used in the, in the library uh, system, but also in, in the research uh, community, this, theme, this topic uh, linked open data the legal and ethical aspects, but also the long-term preservation uh, topics, but not being as a service from the German National Library, but the knowledge especially will be very welcome. And I add this slide on an impressive milestone we had seen in the last, in the last years. Starting almost 2016, we started what kind of research data we might have in, in the German National Library. It came up the copyright law in Germany, where the German National Library is very active involved. Um, you might imagine why. We started with the first DH project, the dime novels, and so on and so on. And every step is building up on the, on the step, steps before. I hopefully can tell you on a long journey for memory organizations, digitizing of the catalog was the first step, so to speak. We have to set up authority files like the German, uh, no, like the authority file of in Germany, um, linked open data, but also newspaper database um, and things go on. We have to collect and document digitized and digital works. Um, and we make sure those data are available, make those data available in the community in a suitable way. That's the point we are standing more or less. And it is an exciting journey for memory organization, especially for the head of the IT department, I may admit. There are a lot of questions concerning the collection. We will discuss it later. There are some technical, but also some legal issues. And you might imagine also some cultural issues. And I guess that's it. Thanks for your attention. Yes, thank you very much, Peter. Uh, we do have some minutes for questions, so please um, use the mic for questions. So I think the best thing, yeah, Kirill Simov, please. You said that uh, the access to the collections is restricted by the wall. What about the results from different projects? Are they also restricted or this can be reused by the community? Good question. Yes. Um, as always in a legal sense, it depends. Um, it depends whether it is a citation 
So we have this discussion. Is it is it more a citation or is it more the full text? If uh, I'm interested, let's say in uh, science fiction uh, literature and extracting keywords depending on the publishing date of the books could be quite useful for the research, whether there will be a restriction to use this or uh, it depends on. Well, this, this, bring, this brings us to the, to the question of the derived text format immediately. There are some, there are some, some file formats, some information density, which may leave the, the, the German National Library, yes. And, and the more statistical this is, the easier way it gets out. Hopefully this answers your question a little bit. But we have, to, we have to, to prove it each and every time. And that's the reason why we would like to investigate in this derived, derived text format to have a suite pre-processed and not that the researcher should, should do it by themselves. But we have, to, we have to build up some rules on, on that. Okay. Yes, there are some, there are some results uh, are leaving the German National Library, but we have to have a closer look on it. How, info, how, much, how much information is in it? Okay. Thank you very much. Let us say that I want to train a generative neural network model on your entire newspaper database. Is that possible? Let me sing a little bit on your question. Um, yes, uh, in principle, yes. We have to set up this collection. This might be, or might be okay, but we have not the machinery behind that at the moment. So we have no HPC cluster or no throughput cluster to do this, this training. That's, that's the, the limitation we have at the moment. It can only be done by the researchers in-house. The other story is, when I decided tomorrow to do this, I have the, the possibility, and it is legally completely okay, when I do it on a HPC center uh, with my former colleagues where I come from. To give you an example, our long-time preservation system is not running in the German National Library. It is running in one university, in, in, in the university, no, in the computer center of the University of Göttingen. So there are some possibilities to process all our data outside. Thanks very much indeed for an excellent keynote, Peter. Um, you told a little bit about what the role of the German national libraries in the various different German research infrastructures um, is. And I wondered, um, I'm not sure how many national libraries are already in the various different Clarin uh, consortia now, but if you could give some tips about encouraging national libraries to join Clarin, um, at the national level, uh, what would they be? So hopefully the first step is invite me to give you a talk, to give them a talk on, on what we have, to, have done. Actually, I got some more invitation to show what the National Library is doing in this research communities. Um, and there are some, some libraries standing for the decision just before the decision what should we do with this, with this text and data mining? What should we do with the digital humanities? Um, there is my last slide, I guess, show the answer of that. Allowing a pilot, try it out, not start with the 100 or even with the 120% solution. And give it, go, go into the risk. That's what we have done. We have not hired people before starting that. That's the reason why the, the, the one or the other task is actually lying on my desk. So go into the risk, enable it, creating free spaces. That's the topics. It's, it's a very exciting journey we had, had on, on this, at least for parts of the German National Library, I have to say. There are parts not interested in, in that for, for sure. But I guess learning from the examples is, is one of the answers. 
and and bring the topics, I guess this will be discussed later, and bring the topics active to the national libraries, to the huge libraries. As I told you, being the national library as an organization is quite different in Germany as what is the virtual uh, the virtual national library we have to, to be observed with. Yes. Is it the answer to your question? At least a little bit. Yeah.